Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kieran. I'm a junior doctor and a comedian working in Manchester. I'm joined by one of my best friends who is also named Kieran, who has just returned from being a doctor in Australia. So in this Hi, series, guys. we are... <laughs> okay, that's fine. You can, you can speak as well. That's fine. So... It's not just your channel. It's got my name on it too. In, the, in this series, we are talking everything to do with becoming a doctor, a UK doctor in Australia. In the first video, we talked about why you might want to go check that video out here and in today's video we're going to be talking about the process so this is really the meat of it one of the things that stopped me going was I heard from a lot of people that there's a lot of stuff you've got to do to actually transfer and start working there so I want you to talk us through how you'd even start so starting from a scratch you finished your F2 you're planning an F3 first point would be you need some patience you need so much patience mm -hmm. it's just such a long long process okay. you've got to jump through so many different hoops you have to sign up to so many different types of websites mm -hmm. you are hemorrhaging money just just to get there to work on your first day so the first thing you've got to do is decide where you want to go if you want to be working in Melbourne you want to work rural you'd rather work near Sydney Brisbane whatever whatever state you might want to be in select that because then you can start targeting the websites you've got the balance between all the jobs coming up on the websites or the jobs coming through the recruiters and you can either email them. I know a lot of people have, uh, they, they'll call up the different switchboards to be able to, you know, in, within the time zones, which is so, so, awful. So, so how do you do that? Let's say, is it feasible to say, oh yeah, I definitely want to go to the to, to Sydney or definitely want to go to Melbourne? Because I imagine like London, they're more popular places and there more are. It's, fe it's feasible. It's yeah. feasible. I think so most- Can anyone do it? From what, from what I've heard, the most competitive is Sydney. From the least number of internationals that are in Sydney, there are far mm -hmm. more in a lot of the other in, in a lot of the other big cities if you want to just select one i think that's possible mm -hmm. i think i think you can do that we selected melbourne and we were there was a group of at the start three which expanded more and more and we were able to all select Melbourne and all be able to get jobs in Melbourne. So you selected Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, how did you find the contact details of who to contact in Melbourne? You mentioned calling some switchboards. Yeah. So did you just literally Google the name of the hospital yeah. and call the yeah. call? You yeah. call them. So that's part Can you imagine of... calling uh, yeah, number yeah. zero? Yep. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Can you put me through to the recruiter? <laughs> <laughs> And they'd be that, like, what they're called? And they'd say, who are you looking for? I'm like, Re recruitment. <laughs> and they put you on to, through to the medical registrar on call. Might be anybody. It's like, do you need some help? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah. you've, you've called a switchboard, you've yeah. asked for the recruiter. Yeah, and then you say, hi, my name's Kieran, I'm interested in a job um, mm, great at, at your hospital. Um, I'm wondering when do you put the jobs out? I'm wondering what jobs do you have available? Do you recruit international medical graduates? Nearly always will say, please look at the jobs website and everything will come up on the jobs website. But I don't think it will damage your chances and it has not to be able to then have an email address, have a contact to be able to get in touch with them, uh, to show your interest, to be able to send your CV and then also wait for the jobs to be able to come up. So is that what you did? So that's what I did. did. You called up, yeah. you got someone's email address, yeah. you applied for the jobs officially on the jobs website and also yeah. emailed them. Yeah. What is this job web jobs website? So they're on every on every trust website, each of the regions mm -hmm. um, of regions of a big city or regions outside of the big city, they're broken up into the little health districts, mm -hmm. which are run by hospital trusts. On each of those different hospital trust websites, you've got job vacancy portal, and mm -hmm. then you would just go into the job vacancies and you would search for jobs for positions. The difficulty is that in different places, in different states, the same position is called different things. Okay. So you could be called a hospital medical officer, medical officer, principal, medical officer or principal house officer some can be a senior hospital medical officer and the like so apply for all of them okay <laughs> apply for all of them and um, what about specialty then how are you deciding or, or do you just blanket say i'll do whatever or would they prefer you to say i'm looking for a job in this so i think it yeah good question it really depends on uh what you are most prioritizing so if you say i want to work in central Sydney Hospital and I want to have this specific job and I want to go between these months, good luck. Okay. Is, what, <laughs> is, what was, good luck. is what I was told from, from one of the recruiters on the phone. She was a lovely lady, but she said, 
good luck. You've applied via the jobs website or you've emailed this recruiter. Yeah. And then what happens next when they get back to you? Or do they, are they, are you guaranteed for them to get back to you? No, so you're not guaranteed to get back to you, particularly when I first applied, which was in 2020, around March, which was exactly when the pandemic was hitting the UK and the world. There was, everything was up in the air. Very different from the second time round. First time round, I applied through the job portals, got, well, got, got an interview, then a job, and then after that, the whole process begins. The second time round, which is the time I'm just going to be going out um, again, was different where I emailed the different contacts, giving my CV. They were then able to offer interviews and then jobs from that. So I've tried both ways. Okay, and which which one was easier? They're much of the same. You've had an interview. Yeah. How long after your interview are they saying, yeah, actually we'll take you? How long is that contract going to be for? Because I know some people gotcha. are like, yeah. oh, I, I just want to go for four months or six yeah. months. A lot of people have to go for the year. Is that right? Some uh, hospitals will encourage you to go for a year. It has to be a minimum of six months. Mm -hmm. I would say most really encourage a year. If you go less than a year, then you might get penalized by not getting your rotations or getting put to places further out than you would like to be because they prioritize people are going to be there longer. You're going to be there up to two years because of the types of visas that you, they put you on. Again, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that at another point, the different types of visas that they want to put you on. But it would really be six months to two years. And when does that year start? Because uh, obviously if you're finishing F2, you're going to finish at the start of August. Yeah. Can you go over and start working straight away? Or yeah. I heard somewhere that their year starts in February. That's that's exactly right. Yeah, you heard that from me. So <laughs> <laughs> So they, they, they I heard it somewhere. The, I heard it on the great <laughs> I'm, I'm editing this video. Okay. I'm going to make it seem like I knew all of this information. <laughs> They'll start from uh, February to February, is, mm -hmm. is the academic year in Australia. The academic year in the UK is August to August. So when people in the UK finish their foundation year one, foundation year two, they'll finish in August. You can then join for the what would be the third term, mm -hmm. which is halfway through the year for the Australian year. So you miss out on their semester one and semester two, but you can join for their semester three and semester four. There's a lot of job vacancies available. They might not be the specific ones you're looking for. People who run the rotors won't be able to prioritize exactly what you want because they'll have already done that in February for the people coming in. So why are there gaps there? Is it is it because Brits are leaving in August to go home to start training? No. Or what, so why are there rotor gaps all of a sudden in the middle of a year? So there's rotor gaps because of the way that the registrar posts and training come about. If a registrar or a, a position to be able to move up for somebody from, uh, from our position, uh, they'll then take that, but they don't have to necessarily finish the contract of a whole year. The people who want to then move up will take it whenever the job's available. I so see. if the job's available mid-year, well then they go. And they're gonna move from their medical officer position to a registrar position, mm -hmm. and then somebody else now, they, they've got a rotor gap and they need to be able to fill it. Juicy. Juicy, juicy stuff. Juicy, you need, you need to find, juicy video. You need to find those opportunities. Yeah, you do. I, I think I'm gonna split this, how to get to Australia. I'm gonna split it into two halves, because yeah, this has been a lot of information, and also it's been a really good first part. So we've talked in this video about practically what you do in terms of reaching out, putting the feelers out, getting that interview, mm -hmm. getting your offer. And in the next half, we're gonna talk about what you then need to do next in terms of spending those dollar bills, visas, all of that stuff to then get to Australia. So thanks for watching guys. If you're new, subscribe to the channel so you can check out the rest of this series about becoming a doctor in Australia. And we'll see you in part two.